Hey y'all. So instead of music background this time, I'm going to be doing some audio commentary. Maybe that'll help a little bit more. Um, I admit the annotations itself is a, a lot of work <laughs> in one piece. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do this. Maybe it'll help a lot more and explain uh, a lot more faster. And plus, uh, I, I'm getting tired of YouTube's uh, copyright uh, warnings and every and etc. So that's been affecting my upload times and I'm deciding to just go ahead and do original audio. So anyways, right here we've got a... Um, this is the first time we fought this team. We actually fought them twice in the same day and we ended up winning the second one. But I didn't record that because I uh, because of the way that this team played I honestly thought that we didn't really have a chance after seeing uh, after seeing their strategy as you'll see right here and basically what they've done is the uh, original ice stacking build so as you can see they've are they've already added some amulet blades or some treasure blades and on their very last ice so we can tell that Jennifer's an ice Kyle's an ice and therefore since Darby's being shielded heavily she and has around 2920 uh, 27 to 2900 health that she is a life player so early on, uh, noticing that there were two ice and that they were going first, I need to do empower at the very beginning. Just to put myself in the lead in case we need like a, an instant stun, but at the same time I'm thinking, well if they carry ice spells, then that's a major disadvantage to me, so I'm much better off trying to cleanse my allies, uh, Cass and Fallon, uh, who are, who are uh, life and storm respectively. So you can see I've got a, I've got an abundant amount of cleanses just in case we need it, and Fallon's got some melts to help ensure that they cannot stop me from doing my job, or, or at least uh, stop them from forcing me to use all my pips. And here we go, triple bladed so far. Shot out a snow angel, most likely Gargantua, and let's see what what kind of powers this got. Yeah. Slight, I think it's buffed by some kind of treasure card, so already huge damage to, to some of us right there with the initial damage, especially the Fallon. So we're paying attention, really close attention to Pips, and once he shot out something, I am I basically called out that the first ice the first ice will definitely be tossing out some kind of frost giant to ensure that we get an extra tick. And unfortunately, the melt was too late, but at least the life player cannot hit us or dispel cast. So we'll have to force Jennifer to either dispel, or maybe Kyle could dispel as well. So we were, um, but we were expecting a stun at this point. If she does throw a frost giant, though, notice that Cass and Fallon do have the, their stun shield or the uh, convictions up. So she's not gonna go. She's not gonna stun. So I think it, maybe the convictions maybe uh, change the play up a bit. I think if we didn't have any convictions, she would have frost gianted, and that would have uh, forced us to to sit through one more of those ticks. So life player still did not get rid of her life dispel. So that was kind of a, a sigh of relief. But uh, meanwhile, there is an infection that will go on Cass. So. I just wanted to make sure that after cast rebirths or anything, that the life player would not be able to uh, disable her or dispel her right away. So, so instead of the cleanse, I decided to go ahead and affect her, affect that life player from being able to do, being able to do anything, uh, especially when they have first turn and she has that conviction up. So that I expected, you know, stun might not go down, so we'll have to we'll have to give cast some breathing room. So let's go ahead and life dispel that uh, Darby again. So now two Snow Angel ticks. At least the first one wasn't bladed heavily. Uh, Kyle still hasn't gotten rid of his ice dispel, so that's a little relief. But then Jennifer does have five pips, uh, which is possible that next round she'll have enough for a Frost Giant. So she passes here. Uh, life player finally gets rid of all her dispels, but now we're uh, unfortunately under the mercy of her hitting or not hitting. Luckily, she's weak at this point, and Fallon's Fallon has four pips up, two ices that are dispelled, and to ensure that she, uh, and to ensure that their teammates cannot cleanse one another, especially that life player cleansing the ice player to hit, um, 
Fallon went ahead and shot up a, a smoke screen, as you can see. So when so that's one good strategy is is if uh, you place another debuff on top of a dispel, that it that it helps prevent players from being able to uh, cleanse one another. So here, as you can see, I know I'm going to live. Fallon might not live, so she's going to go ahead and see. Yeah, we were worried about the live player hitting, taking out Fallon. It would have taken out the ice take too, so that would have been helpful, but they didn't fall up. <laughs> they didn't fall for that. So we went ahead and uh, had her play a rank zero card instead of like a Tempest just to knock away some of the uh, potential absorbs. So there we go. Cast being able to, we were, as a team, we were able to coordinate another rebirth being fired off for us. So this team is, um, our opponents, as you can see, they're really, really aggressive. They're, um, they're not too worried about defense at this point. And they haven't stunned this yet, so we're still up for the element of surprise. Cast still has three convictions up, so I'm going to go ahead and toss Fallon another, because these two ices are able to hit. You know, if they're not blading, so. And there goes a stun. So they do, if they double stun, uh, there might be a chance that Fallon may go down, depending on what uh, what the second ice uses, or if this life hits. So luckily, Cass was unaffected, but she does have such a low number amount of pips. So it was kind of, uh, we were feeling kind of a little, a little bit anxious, and then second nice guy decides to take advantage and of, of, their, of our stunned states and decides to blade up so we can only expect more blades to be uh, <laughs> propped up on him interestingly enough I believe we uh, encountered some uh, some ice stackers as I like to call them or Alric Ravensinger likes to call them uh, hoarders uh, I guess in reference to the uh, to the one boss in Dragonspire that likes to spam a bunch of uh, a bunch of blades or, or wards. So, well, actually, that's the wrong boss. I don't know what I'm talking about. The hoarder is actually the boss. That um, oh boy, it's been a while. Anyway, she has an item drop, but she uh, oh, it's a storm sword. Storm sword uh, for grandmasters. So. That wasn't her. Anyways, but you you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, so as you can see, I have Earthquake in my treasure deck just to ensure you know classes that or I mean teams that decide to uh, spend all their time blading up without any uh, without any uh, recognition of consequences or whatnot. Hopefully it would tear them down, but I think in this match, no, yeah, they, they, uh, <laughs> they went ahead and used more blades, more treasures, as you can see, and that's that's their consequence for stacking so many at a time. It's much better just to spam your attacks and use them right away before your blades are taken off. So, you know, I mean, some people like to say. You know, hey, you should be using the ice school only, but that would mean that I'd be at a disadvantage. My teammates, you know, storm classes, fire classes, uh, myth classes with low health points, cannot stand up to mass hitting, uh, mass uh, blade stacking at least. And e even if you have uh, a theurge on your side. Um, well, I mean, if you have a Theurge on your side, the Ice players have nothing to worry about. They can continue to blade up without worry. So, I mean, with the huge HP pool and high regeneration rate and big resist, I mean, for every point of damage we do to an Ice player, it takes half as much to heal that off. Half as much energy or, or values. So... We're trying to keep these ices down as much as possible, so the spell is going to be stacked on. And uh, there you go, another another great play right there. The spell and then a 
smoke screen. So true, they can remove two, uh, they can remove those two debuffs in one go, but at least it saves us one more turn, and in essence, maybe two more turns. So watching their pips, knowing that oh man, all three of them have really really big pips, and this this ice guy has enough blades. We're gonna go ahead and uh, empower me once again, so we're prepared for any kind of any kind of punishment. So there you go, Fallon going ahead to place a storm spell, making sure Darby cannot cleanse Kyle in case we do have future plans of dispelling him even further. So, or or some kind of heals perhaps for for Jennifer. So. Again, thinking ahead, I'm gonna. I was trying to go ahead and and block off her uh, storm spell with this plague, and also hoping to reduce damage off these ices. But I guess they've learned now to uh, not since I empower that there was a potential potential earthquake coming, so might as well go ahead and hit. So because of that intimidation, these ices are now uh, <laughs> they're worried and they're. But now shooting and reduce damage. I mean, it's still bladed, but at least it's not, uh, they're not insta kills. And that was what we were trying to prevent, especially going second. Major, major disadvantage. And, uh, meanwhile, I think this is the game where, like, first turn got a lot of the sprightlies. And, uh, <laughs> had it been evened out, had both sides received the number amount of sprightlies, or at least. If all the sprightlies were told together and then split amongst the two teams, I think we would have had a chance in a much, much longer game. So, meanwhile, trying to look for a cleanse, but I'm... We're just hoping that those smokes would uh, cause them to stay put. So, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and stun them, or at least hit them really hard with whatever I've got. So here comes the Frost Giant doing some extra damage, trying to take out the Light Player as soon as possible. So I think I was hoping for uh, a hit from Fallon at the same time, maybe a Tempest of some sort. Yeah, she doesn't have enough pips, so Cass is going to go ahead and rebirth. Um, also, adding a lot more damage, or at least per, um, dealing some damage to the Light Player. That forces her to think more defensively as if, oh, my life could go down to a Tempest now, so I'm going to have, instead of hitting with my Ice teammates, I'm going to just heal. And I've got three sprites, so I know we can, we can counter any kind of like, uh, any new Snow Angels being thrown at us. And here we go, Blizzard to get rid of that, so she's going to go ahead and consider Pips. Critical comes off, blocked by me. Not blocked by Cass, unfortunately. I think she had lower ice block than the rest of us, and uh, and Fallon does block it, of course. No, she's gonna throw herself this tiny heal. So again, conserving pips for herself and uh, being in wait, ready to hit us with the Force Lord if needed. And here comes another attempt to remove uh, their plagues with blizzards, which still deal quite a lot of numbers. Quite a lot of damage, nevertheless. So, gonna go ahead and try to keep our life player in the game against any uh, extra ticks. And uh, <laughs> unfortunately, Sprightly's going off for this guy too. But at least we know only one ice can hit unless he throws out another blizzard. And now we're thinking, oh boy, there could be a forest lord coming out. So, Cass, uh, being a uh, being real generous in, in uh, giving up those ice shields to that tick to keep Fallon in a little bit further. So now we have to wonder about what J Jennifer has in her hands. Uh, same with Kyle. So I'm going to go ahead, and because I have the rebirth in my hand, um, which is actually crafted by Cass, thanks to Cass, <laughs> redundant there, but um, I mean, it's it's applying as many cards as possible to to counter. And again, I mean, sure, we're using I'm using a life card, but at the same time, I have to create a combo. So, when using cards outside of school, you have to sometimes, or at least I want to say most of the time, you have to rely on power. It at least puts you, um, it at least gives you those extra pips, lets you stay within the within the dance of pips. I want to say. 
because as your opponents gain pips, so do you to keep up. And at this point, we knew that, hey, we needed, uh, because of my high resist, um, I might as well hang in there and uh, and try to heal my teammates. They wouldn't see that coming because we were expecting that since Cass had low pips, that once she started getting about three power pips, that the life player may dispel her or that everyone would take her out first. So, got to go ahead and try to ninja our way through this. <laughs> And she's getting rid of the uh, plague as well, so that's already a sign of of anticipated hitting with a force lord of some sort. And so I'm gonna toss a weakness on top of. Uh, so that earthquake went down. Frost shine's gonna come up, so they're gonna be able to stun us right away. <laughs> unfortunately. So already huge, huge damage with the stacked blades, and that is that is majorly why I dislike that strategy. Um, I mean, I, I guess the I guess one way we can counter that, if we just want to enjoy PvP, is to go in with all ice or all life or or some stacked school of, of some sort. But honestly, it gets it gets pretty boring at that point. <laughs> so instead of a a storm lord, we gotta go ahead and have. Uh, let that uh, storm elf take take out any extra shields that may uh, that might pre present itself at this point. And here we go, forest lord popping out. I'm going to go ahead and uh, as you as you saw earlier, I put up the rebirth. Cast had a unicorn, so we were gonna basically nullify all that all that power that she put through at us. So yeah, um, so again, using Rebirth, you have to be prepared, you have to set your deck ready to be respond to anything, and this is, I mean, this is many, many months of, uh, of practice and preparation and, and just playing with the same teammates over and over, so you understand how each other's decks work. I mean, in some of my annotations in the other videos, I mentioned that you have to play as a team and, and, and not necessarily with a team, um, and there's a major difference between the two. Because um, playing with the team, you have, I mean, even though you have the same goal of wanting to win, you don't, you aren't necessarily performing in the same direction. You're going to have four different heads looking the same way, but everyone has their own direction of getting there in a way. So that's playing with a team. That's kind of like survivor in a way. Not everyone wants, uh, wants one specific person to win <laughs> the uh, the overall pot at, or the uh, the grand prize at the end they they're actually trying to work together so they can so they're all passing on to the next rounds and whatnot but then at towards the end they have different interests they have conflicting interests so if you're playing as a team your cards and your decks will be able to work with one another in interchangeably um, and I think that's what Perfect Catch has been able to uh, to pull off. And it's just, uh, as you can see, we're we're able to. I mean, it's uh, it's already about 37 minutes in the, into the game at this point, but still we're hanging on even against these heavy ice hitters. So we've been trying to perfect our play against uh, against ice stackers. Um, and it's it's actually been working out. There's a video that I'm really proud to show uh, uh, show you guys later on, and it's uh, actually overtaking a four v four of uh, three ice, one life. And um, I think that's one of the games that it, that is a must see. So Cassandra gonna go ahead and try to take out that. Uh, that storm shield and Fallon's gonna try to storm lord. So we're hoping that no storm dispel comes out. Um, not sure what she was trying to dis uh, dispel or, or whatnot. <laughs> I don't know if she remembered that she had that on, but she she aimed that spell at her ally. So I think maybe she forgot. And unfortunately, storm elf within the count come off. Otherwise, we might have done a lot lot more damage to the life player right there. Unfortunately, so. 
little little unlucky play right there, but at least we stunned. Oh no, we didn't stun the life player. I think she already had those shields, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, PvP is um, at least at least from my point of view, it's not about out hitting, but it's about outlasting. I mean, if you can force your opponents to reshuffle uh, because they have attacked, attacked, and attacked over and over with no avail, and they're not, and they're still not going defensive mode in any way, then it shows that they have only got one, they've only got one mindset of how to win, and uh, and when you only have one, when you only have one strategy of winning then you're going to be funneled at some point. The more games that you play, the hard, the, as time goes on, the harder it is to, uh, to upkeep that strategy, to, uh, to, um, the less effective it becomes. And it's because we are, there's always, uh, there are always counter strategies that are being performed, or being uh, invented or, or uh, devised. So innovative play is is uh, is always great to watch. It's all it's it's a great indicator that you know these players know what they're doing and they're not relying on just memory and and card order and everything, <laughs> which is what a lot. I mean, I'll admit I do have a big bias against uh, blade stacking. <laughs> You know, there. True, there are the arguments that well, it ends the battle faster. You don't want your opponent to live too often, especially if they're really good at defending. But time and time again, in almost any sport, game, strategy, um, there's that quote that the greatest defense is the best offense. And at this point, it's about 44 minutes in the game, and even with two ice, hoping to spam uh, get attacks at us <laughs> using their high health as uh, as barriers before they're shot down or anything, and the life player to ensure that they never go down. Well, I don't want to say never, but to to ensure that they do not go down as fast. We were pretty much giving giving them a run for their money. As you can see, they're already down to. I mean, ice players are just low on pips at this point, and I think they might have tried to add some critical gear in because they were they got a few procs off easily. And uh, here we go, another storm lord this time. Ooh, critical. We were just really happy to see this, but unfortunately, all blocked. Would have been nice though. Um, so this life player is. We'll be able to move, but at least we're getting rid of their stun shields at a decent rate. I think at this time, uh, Fallon mentioned that she needed to, at some point, save up pips, up to seven pips or so, so she can combo it and, and at least produce further uh, or create further intimidation and cause them instead of it caused the other team instead to instead of hit to go ahead and shield heal use their pips in a, in a uh, non-offensive way. So Sprightly is going to keep us in there, so again, Sprightly is a great pet against uh, damage over time users, against fire, ice, uh, sometimes even death, against their bone dra against their skeletal dragons. So here we go, forcing her to heal 1500 damage, or 1500 life return to the ices. Uh, <laughs> We were uh, pretty ticked at this point, but at least we were, we had the le a small lead in the pit war right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure they can't dispel, make sure they can't uh, react too quickly or blade up as efficiently. Here comes an, uh, this life dispel from Cass to ensure that the, their life player cannot hit us next turn, because we still do have those dragon ticks on top of us. And here comes another melt in my deck. And studying the pips, Jennifer has only four, Cal has six, he has enough for a frost giant next turn, or if he has a power pip, a, uh, a snow angel. So more blades, <laughs> not very surprising. 
and uh, it's about 50 minutes in the game at this point. So this is sped up by by about two times its uh, regular rate. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure you can't stop that. But then I realize, oh man, uh, Darby has a chance of uh, cleansing her teammate. And unfortunately, some kid decided to be a jerk. Uh, mainly for cussing. <laughs> I mean... I'm really, do you really want to run out your competitor? I mean, do you really want to create such an unfriendly environment in the arena that fewer people play and therefore you have a better chance of um, of winning or so? Because the larger number of pool of competitors that you have, the I mean, the much more fun that these matches can be, but when you have trolls like that <laughs> uh, using profane language and whatnot, it, it just, I can see why some parents don't want their kids in the arena. I mean, there's just too much drama going on. Or So anyways, I'm going to step off the, the small so, uh, soapbox there. <laughs> so yeah, this is, uh, this is the small dark side that I've been writing about in the arena that, you know, there's a lack of common sense for some reason. <laughs> In, in the audience sometimes and and uh, with some teams I'm not sure what's going on but here we go successful storm elf I think Fallon will hit unfortunately a fizzle that would have been really great to just stun that ice player right there stun that uh, stun two ice players actually so really really bad luck on that on our part right there we would have been able to shot down uh, shoot down and force that life that life player to, to heal, but unfortunately this ice player will get his damage out nevertheless. I was hoping to buy us another turn for maybe a melt or a weakness of some sort. Make sure he can't do, do as much damage to us. So, oof, really, really bad luck right there. Would have been able to prevent any combos from, the, from those ices instead. Fallon's gonna go ahead and take a lot of damage, and that life player is now Unexposed, she should have gotten hit by a, a bladed stormlord with gargantuan on top of that, so that would have sent her panicking a little bit and forced those ice players to defend her a lot, a lot more vigilantly. Here we go, a late stormlord, unfortunately. Um, so that would have been the damage done at that point. Darby would have uh, suffered a lot. I would have been able to combo right after with a hit of some sort, uh, assuming those ices don't heal her. But at least it would have prevented another uh, another spam or barrage of ice attacks. So we were hoping for that. So Sprite it's doing its job. Every time one goes off, I keep wishing and hoping, hey, hey, one for one for Fallon, please, one for Fallon. So you can see, Cass, is, we've been picking up a new strategy. We actually learned this from one of the teams that we were, we have uh, played in ranked, and that they have the other side was carrying elucidated rebirth. So, uh, unfortunately, I guess they saw that earlier that we were casting with just five pips. So she foresaw that and went ahead and shut us down. I should have used the cleanse, but I was hoping, I was just hoping against the element of surprise against the fact of surprise that she would not uh, ex that they, they would not expect that so already in my mind I'm thinking okay I need to find my amulet rebirth or whatever it is so so unfortunately cast suspense were used and uh, trying my best to I need I, I could toss that life to spell but I foresee that since they do have uh, a hitter on their side that We'll eventually need that life to spell at some point, especially when we have this team in the disadvantage. Or in the disadvantage. So, going ahead and kept that, going to go ahead and try to blind them even further, cause them to wait to gamble with that, with those to spell, with the uh, uh, smoke screen. 
another melt in my hand, starting to run low, the car is 35 out of 101, so not looking too good, but some extra melts are coming out, so it'll give us a chance if these ice do not hit, I'm gonna go ahead and cross, dispel them. Get past uh, some extra leeway, uh, some extra um, chances of removing that dispel. But unfortunately, the ice is going to go ahead and and use any pips that he can to break any ice shields that she may be placing on. So double ice spell. Unfortunately, one is too late. Castle try to get another off and learning from our mistakes. I realized, oh no, I do not have any cleanse. This is this is bad news. <laughs> but I'm assuming that the life player will hit and set the spell. She's gonna go for a kick, which will spark off a, a lucky sprightly. So good thing we're gonna go ahead and get. We're gonna go ahead and allow ourselves to uh, to rebirth thanks to Castle's elucidated rebirths. So as you see, Jennifer J. Flame saying that we waste pips dispelling, but as you can see, we've been in this game for about an hour so far. I mean, again, this is at uh, speed two times, uh, or double speed, and two Isis and one life still cannot take down um, our Storm player and, uh, and our life player. So, I mean, you guys be the judge if you want. <laughs> They still weren't able to kill us, and uh, we were able to stop a lot of combos, um, just with a few uses of our pips. So I mean, that's pretty, pretty much fine. I mean, sure, it may not have worked too much in our advantage in this game, because I did, I did. Unfortunately, I did spoil it at the beginning, but at least. Um, Providing this audio commentary, you can see why, and, and uh, at least get some hit, some ti um, some tips from some of these plays. So, I mean, I've always stressed that you know your losses are always your best best games to learn from. You get to see where your mistakes happen. You get to see where, if any hesitation is present, you'll know where it is you'll know how to how to counteract that next time. So at this point I am I need to reshuffle to to retrieve my cleanses and we're gonna have Fallon here go ahead and just smack the living daylights out of someone. Hopefully taking off their blade. <laughs> and because their ice player is unprotected of some sort. We were just gonna smack him up. Me, uh, and just uh, ensure that he uh, drops all his blades, but unfortunately, it looks like there will be a frost giant earthquake combo. So here we go, Mason cast, but luckily we have conviction on uh, on Fallon and I. But huge hits, huge ice bubble. So I'm thinking that's about a 45% bubble with the blade and a gargantuan frost giant. That'll send. Uh, That'll send Cass uh, running for her money a bit. But she does have three sprightly, so that will counteract about half of the spell, if not more than half. And I'm going to go ahead and hit. So luckily that ice bubble is up, and for me being able to throw out my pips and do some damage to them. So I was having Fallon go ahead and hit, because this light player may be healing, she may be hitting or something. Uh, we just need to take him out. Take away his sun shields. Or it's actually, this is against the life player. Forgot, I forgot who she targeted. So, trying our best to s smack, them up hard, smack them up hard. Um, and going to follow up with a Tempest. We're, I'm looking at Jennifer. I'm worried that she may have Seder. She may have her own rebirth amulet. So, gonna go ahead and try to stay in, stay in there our best, but she's gonna instead hit. So, conserving her pips, not too worried about the life player. I think I think there will be some uh, shielding going on, but at least my, my ice ticks aren't there to 
to further pressure them, and luckily for Fallon here, she gets two Spiley's to go. She'll be undoing that blizzard damage. And a Sprightly takes go off here goes off here, but I I honestly think that she used she casted it from her pet because normally if Sprightly does go off on a player's turn, it would be uh, I mean I don't think she even passed at that point. Otherwise, there would have been a small passing animation showing that she did use that. I mean, she did um, showing that the pet uses Sprightly. And even though the pet used at that time, uh, you could tell that right after those, right after those DOTs or HOTs that were on top of her, that uh, <laughs> that she did actually use a card in her hand for this for that Sprightly. I mean, it's not too hard to miss, and unfortunately, we weren't able to. I mean, we know an ice take would have taken this uh, life player down, but I guess Jennifer may have healed her at some point. Someone healed their ally, may have shielded against ice even, which would have, which would have helped. So. So here we go, single bladed, she's gonna go ahead and blade up her ice partner, which is a big surprise, and yeah, I guess they were actually, they did their math, <laughs> as you can see, they're not too worried about their life player, extra sprightly came in, able to save, <clears throat> didn't require any shields at all, sprightly kept her in, so another major advantage of that pet is being able to provide some comebacks there, so oof, really close. Really close finish for us, but unfortunately not enough. And I don't think Fallon was able to find another. Te I think if she did Tempest. It would have been. Um, it is a waste of pips in this case, and a bad call on my part. But I was hoping, hey, let's not let this light uh, the, the first ice player heal up in any, um, in any way. And go I'm gonna go ahead and have Cast dispel it even further. So trying our best to take them down as much as possible, but unfortunately. So, we're at the mercy of now at two heavily bladed ices, uh, or at least the second guy, second uh, ices, and um, huge ice bubble up, so that's, that's a lot more pain, and stun shields, no stun shields are found, unfortunately. A little rumbling from my phone on this side. Uh, I think this is about the seventh or eighth ice like ice stacking team uh, that we face. At least um, a different team, not required, not consisting of the same players as previous teams. And we've gotten a lot, lot better. Before we used just to drop like flies against ice players, and you know, not understanding co um, counters and what cards we could use, especially going second. But. Uh, Eventually, we just, I mean, that's just the attitude of our team, and it's to find new ways to play, um, explore, and try out different things. So, that's, I mean, that's another reason why we don't use, like, a full ice team with one life player, or a full life player team, or a full storm player team. I mean, that's, that could um, allow us to, to win tickets a lot easier. But um, it gets it gets really boring after a while, and it doesn't really allow any room for advancement or development as a team. I mean, your decks do not evolve at any point, and as you can see, Kyle's already reshuffled. Fallon needs to reshuffle, having get, gotten rid of a lot of cards. So this ice player has all its blades black, back, including maybe an amulet, cr a crafted amulet blade, uh, any treasures that he tossed out. So he's going to have super, super blades. So they were hoping to, 
I think they were planning actually to prolong the game as far as they can to ensure they'll be able to reshuffle. So I asked for a reshuffle myself so I can get all the melts back uh, and any shields that I may have, any cleanses actually, because I did run out of treasures and I was going to go ahead and shoot a heal over to Fallon and maybe look for some extra powers. I don't, I don't know if I ran out at that point. As you can see, I was... <laughs> I figured, well, if I heal her right now, you know, I could, I could go ahead and wait and for one more shuffle. These ices are down to only a few white pips. Well, just one white pip on the second guy, three pips on the first. And um, I, yeah, I had the chance to either heal or, uh, or reshuffle, so I went ahead and uh, yeah, I was thinking, ah, I need to reshuffle Fallon or heal her because Cass could, could do the same. So at this point, it's late game. It's already an hour hour and 20 minutes in. And we're looking at some danger zones here. So here comes a life dispel. Cass had to pass as well. And we were uh, in Skype just discussing you know, some strategy, some plans. Um, how are we going to get out of this? This guy's reshuffled already. Cass needs to reshuffle. I can reshuffle. So... Life Dispel on top of her, I'm going to go ahead and throw all my pips out. Assuming that they'll try to kill the kill Fallon off her, and here we go. Two Life Dispels, so throwing out all my pips, going to go ahead. I mean, I looked at my hand just now, and I had like two cleansers or so, so I figured, well, I could just build up pips using rank zero cards. So go ahead and keep Fallon up, and she's going to try to add some uh, Life Dispels. I mean, uh, some infections, but at this point, I mean, they're, they're full, they're near to full health, they're really healthy, and we're kind of at their mercy a bit, so we're struggling here to get rid of Cass's double dual dispels, which is kind of ironic, uh, seeing that this team had complained about dispels much er earlier, so I don't know what that was up about, <laughs> but it certainly is, uh, causing us to shield less and less considering that we do have to use cleanses to, to remove the spells and Cass is gonna go ahead and shoot off an early I mean looking at those blades and those pips on those two ices and uh, and that ice bubble and I think the life player had enough to hit as well I mean it 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 was pretty much game over at this point go ahead the first ice will break any ice shields on top of us so I think this is the end of the match, so our, our major downfall here, no, there's going to be a dispel, she's not going to risk missing a force lord, or maybe she didn't have one, and as you can see, four ice blades with a potential 45 bubble, 2000 damage going across the board, so that is the danger of stacking, that is the danger of facing stacked blade teams, and um, yeah, unfortunately, not able to ups withstand that, and it's really hard. So again, you have to counter that with possible earthquakes. You can bring in myth players, and but again, they have low health. So most of the time, some of those teams will try to use colossi or blizzards to take out that myth player first, and then stack blades. So you really have to work deep with your strategy when facing against these teams. Um, but anyway, thanks uh, for hanging here and chilling and uh, checking out our match. So. This is, uh, yeah, that is one of PC's losses, and I think there are some more to come, but, uh, yeah, we try to upload as many matches as possible. Uh, we do throw out matches where it gets really nasty in the game, where there's a lot of language be, um, being thrown out, and, uh, and just some really, really nasty plays, like chain stunning. I mean, there's not too much you can do to counter that, especially against four myth players, so... Anyways, I uh, hope you have a great day. Hope you enjoyed this match. Uh, subscribe, comment, anything you like, questions. Um, and I will see you in the spiral.